Happy New Year's. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the holiday weekend, but we are back for another Q&A. And if you guys did not have the chance to leave your question, just put a comment down below and uh, I'll answer it for you guys. Ibra Magic, hey Frank, I always wanted to know which cosmetic surgeries are ranked from safe to unsafe and which are unacceptable. Hope the best for your future, stay strong. As we said in the BBL video last week, you know, I have no problem with doing a surgery for something you can't change. Like for me, it was my double jaw surgery. I had LASIK eye surgery. You know, there's so many things that are reasonable that will make people happy. But uh, if there is something you're considering doing, you want to reach out to the surgeons or doctors and get like a consultation and just get a better idea of what the recovery process is, what the surgery involves. And then it could get a little intricate of, okay, if, if there's metal or screws involved, you got to get that removed later. You know, how permanent is it? There's a lot of factors that can be answered after speaking to the surgeon that's very subjective to the surgery. Boogle, for those of us who have limited access to the sun, what can be done and what would you suggest to best help with that situation? Certain kinds of lights, lamps, supplements, etc. Really, the only thing you can do is go to a tanning bed, solarium, sunbed, uh, whatever they call it in your country. And, you know, depending on how healthy you are, it might be a little difficult because the actual bulbs and the UVB from the bulbs is not what's dangerous. It's the magnetic electric fields from the bed, which are very, very high powered, as you can imagine, to bring electricity to all of those bulbs. Uh, maybe we'll do something in the future when I have, uh, you know, a better living situation and I'll build something myself. But, uh, you know, maybe tanning once or twice a week in the bed is what you can do because the supplements, especially vitamin D, can only take it so far. Jimmy Beaner. Hello, Frank. I know this is generally off topic, but I would like to pick your brain on this topic. Question. I've recently been interested in purchasing a sauna for heat therapy, sweating, increased heart rate, distress, relax. I'm in a small one bedroom, so really the only realistic option would be an infrared sauna. After loads of research, I landed on Radiant Health Saunas being the lowest in EMF, ELF, RF, body voltage. However, I feel like infrared light is extremely understudied and there's really nothing out there I can find describing any long-term negative side effects from using this therapy. I mean, uh, we did a video on hot and cold therapy and it's one of those things where, yeah, if you have everything else in your lifestyle in check, the diet, the radiation, the sleep, the exercise, then maybe you can consider doing that as a little extra, but I mean, for me, just going outside right now and taking a 10 minute jog is going to give me far more benefits than sitting in a sauna for an hour or two ever will. At least that's my perspective. I think it's kind of overrated just sitting there sweating. VG, Frank, can you add all the videos on best burger reviews into one playlist? Uh, you know what surprises me is that most people don't actually know I did the burger review channel. Uh, but what is it? You have to like watch the videos individually. It doesn't let you just, well. Uh, maybe I'll fix that later. I'll take a look at it. Joan, Frank, I've heard a lot of people recommending vitamin C in a form of supplement. What's the difference of just drinking lemon juice, for example? So I tried like organic, fresh squeezed lemon juice every day. And I mean, that's expensive and unrealistic for most people, but it really messes up your teeth. Like the lemon juice is so acidic, it corrodes it. I can't imagine doing that once a week, let alone every day. So that leads me to believe that that's kind of an unnatural thing to do and just a uh, higher antiscorbutic value is something we need because of modern diet and environment. And there have been a few people uh, recently leaving comments like, oh, you should use Camu Camu or Acerola powder instead of ascorbic acid. And there's a reason I don't use those. Antinutrient flavonoid content kind of disrupts the point of the ascorbic acid, the antiscorbutic properties you're getting. So from everything I've seen, just the plain vitamin C supplement is really the most reasonable thing to do. Although I might try some lemon juice more in the future and see how I feel. Thomas Zieba, what is the primary cause of high ferritin, high B12 and low folate? Do you think it's worth to have a low ferritin for longevity? So a lot of blood markers aren't really that accurate. I mean, they can kind of give you an idea of certain things, but what's to me more effective for gauging B vitamin status is you take them individually, which we have now on organ supplements, and you can see how you feel. You know, if you take a B1 or a B3 and you don't feel much of a difference, but then you take a B9 and you feel a lot better, that can kind of give you an idea of what you're deficient in. But depending on the diet, your organ status, the nutrient balances, environment, it's really hard to say what's causing it. And low ferritin for longevity 
it's not like something you should try to get. It's something that we would naturally have. If the liver is working properly, like for me, I haven't had to donate blood for months and months and months now. My ferritin naturally stays low, even though I'm eating meat every single day. You know, about a year ago when I did that, the ferritin would slowly creep up, creep up, creep up, creep up. But now it's sort of regulating and the ferritin isn't going up anymore. So uh, if you are having fluctuations in the ferritin level, that's an indicator that you know, you have to still fix the diet and stick to it. The Woods Smoky, do you have any recommendations for how to treat arthritis? Thanks, Frank, you're the best. So someone usually asks a question in each of these Q&As where the answer is an overall lifestyle overhaul. So I would ask the person, hey, is your diet similar to what I've been doing? Have you reduced the Wi-Fi EMF with shielding clothing? You know, are you sleeping? Are you grounding? Are you taking certain minimal supplements? But for arthritis specifically, and each of these nuanced diseases, yeah, there are certain things that you might notice a pretty effective difference if you start doing them, whether it's getting a lot of sun, you know, really being out there and tanning for a few hours every single day, taking vitamin K2, taking magnesium. So I would definitely consider those few supplements possibly more. On a Thursday afternoon, happy new year. Thoughts on alcohol as an antimicrobial <laughs> digestives. <laughs> Uh, that's a little ironic because usually alcohol is what causes candida overgrowth in a lot of people. So the liver has to process the alcohol. Then if you're eating sugar with it, then the sugar just sits there and the candida overgrows. So it's pretty bad. And, you know, since I might be leaving New York soon, I, I tried to go to a few restaurants just to kind of get out uh, for once in my life. And when I would have like a lot of alcohol and sugar, I noticed that the candida got really, really, really bad. So. Um, as an antimicrobial, alcohol is not effective. Digestives, which are like alcohols and liqueurs that have a lot of really bitter herbal roots. I mean, to me, those are terrible for your liver. When we did the video on which alcohol is the best, for me, those were the worst. But maybe in someone that's healthy with a functioning liver, they can kind of stimulate some bile production if it's like the only alcohol you're having and a very small amount. But um, if you're trying to heal your gut, the only thing that's alcoholic you should be having would be water kefir. And the probiotic content offsets that. John Sergi, what do you do for your nighttime routine to get a good night's sleep? Do you supplement to help sleep? No, I don't. Uh, the circadian rhythm is big, but what's more important than that is the, the Wi-Fi shielding stuff. So I sleep in like a triple bed canopy. I make sure there's no EMF whatsoever. And then what's also important is a few hours before bed, you wanna make sure your head is shielded. So if you're using your phone, wear a head cover, make sure that, you know, if you're not active, if you're not moving around, if you're just like sitting on some high Wi-Fi device, if you do that right before you try to go to bed, you might have a hard time falling asleep. INTJ, can you explain why when you're bodybuilding, you still maintain a lean physique even though you were eating over 3,500 calories? Is there any other factor why you didn't gain fat except food quality? I don't really think my calories were that high uh, when the food quality is you know, organic and everything is really good, then it's pretty much impossible to gain weight. I mean, if I was gonna start eating like high quality organic cookies and really trying to stuff myself, maybe I would gain weight, but my liver function wasn't really high enough to digest the foods that well. On a Thursday afternoon, video idea, B vitamin and mineral profiles of different meats like beef, pork, chicken, and game meat. For the most part, all meat is kind of high in B vitamins. There's not much fluctuation between them. And if there is, it's dependent on the, uh, the diet of the animal. So that's, that's a little redundant. Um, and if you're trying to address specific B vitamins, you really want to supplement them. Kathy, would you rewrite your book and include more foods? Yeah, honestly, I just don't have the mental energy. You know, um, I think I've said it before at this point. I mean, years ago, like two, three years ago, uh, with the YouTube revenue actually being okay before I was like kind of suppressed. Uh, I expected to have like a, a video editor, a cameraman uh, to be able to do a lot of the stuff on YouTube for me and just take a lot more workload off of me. But that hasn't happened yet. So I just haven't had the mental energy to do a book and or the, the funds to hire a writer to, to help me out with it. Marduk, would you recommend a theoretically perfectly healthy person your current diet protocol to follow long term to maintain health or would suggest allow any changes? So you probably would still want to follow it for, I would say, two years. And then you can say, OK, since I'm perfectly healthy now, there can be deviation. So you said perfectly healthy person. Well, 
that doesn't exist and there's probably some degree of damage that does take time to recover from. So it's a safe bet that, you know, if you invest two or three years on this diet now and then kind of stick to it, like, I mean, I envision myself on this diet for the most of the rest of my life. And then uh, maybe when I'm healthier and better, I can deviate and cheat from it to some degree for periods of time. So haven't gotten there yet, though. Novell plays sleeping with my head on a millimeter wave, five grams of Wi-Fi box. I don't think you're going to be sleeping if that was the truth. Uh, Greg Hill, can you make a video on metabolic flexibility, please? So I'm assuming this means something like you can follow different diets or do different things and you'll be fine. But your metabolism, how you process food, how you feel, how you eat, really everything is dependent on the environment, uh, especially the EMF, the Wi-Fi radiation, the foods you're eating, your organ health status, you know, how healthy are you in general. It's universal between humans what we react to. It's just different degrees of damage and environments can change how we react to certain foods. So I don't, I don't believe in theories like that. Average Joe, if all you could drink was spring water or distilled water, which would it be and why? Uh, well, you can just call up the water company you're purchasing from and ask where the water's from and that will answer your question. You know, if the distilled water is just tap water run through a distiller, that's not that great. It's still full of chemicals and antibiotics and hormones and stuff. And spring water, if it's actually from a spring, then the main downside is, you know, it's in plastic and how high quality was that spring. NYC exposed. Thoughts on cryotherapy, red light therapy, and sauna. I think we covered the hot cold therapy earlier as well as in a, a full length YouTube video. The cryotherapy to me, like just take a cold shower. You know, it's expensive. You have to go there. I think just taking a cold shower is the same effect. Uh, and then the red light therapy is just to me ridiculous compared to reducing the EMF radiation. Those are kind of three big things that have become popular that aren't actually fixing the core health issues. They don't want you to know about the Wi-Fi EMF. They don't want you to know that you have to eat organic food. They're just giving you BS solutions so they can make more money. It's all about them selling you these expensive cryotherapy treatments, these stupid red light setups that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And uh, the sauna isn't really pushed as much as the other stuff because they don't make as much money on it. Grim Tano, I've been taking MSM for hair health growth. Are there any supplements I can take? Are you going to come out with hair supplement? My diet is basically the same as yours, except I eat mostly elk and beef. So I would say you might be eating too much protein. Um, I would try a diet leaning with more carbohydrates and probiotics to help digest those and see if your hair growth improves. Also, the, the, the EMF is very important for that. There are a few supplements. Uh, I wouldn't take MSM because it's you know sulfur-based and that can deplete molybdenum. So you also might want to mess around with some, some of the minerals. Uh, we have like a whole range on organsupplements.com for you. I'd say definitely magnesium, definitely molybdenum, maybe the other stuff too. Uh, the guitar guy guy, how much liver would you say is a good amount to consume for a healthy person with no issues? Most people coming from a standard American diet are incredibly vitamin D and vitamin K2 deficient. And there is usually adequate vitamin A in the standard American diet. So most people don't have to eat liver for a very long time. They have to balance out everything else first. You know, they need a few summers worth of sun. They need to fix their gut health and be replenishing K2. Randall Oland, what are your thoughts on longevity supplements like resveratrol, NMN, and NAD Plus? David Sinclair is trying to get the FDA to ban them so he can patent it and sell as prescription only. I mean, this is a blatant money grab, and it goes back to the negatives and positives where it's far more important to remove the negatives than to add positives. You know, if the building's burning down, you're not going to talk about renovating the bathroom. That's kind of what these people are trying to do. It, it's ridiculous if you understand the context of nutrition, but most people don't. Conventional wisdom has uh, brainwashed people for the most part. Justin Towers, can you please do a video on detox? I see way too many people claiming detox can be done in a few days, LOL. Yeah, I, I mean, we've definitely covered it broadly in, in many, many videos, but uh, I don't think I've done a video. No, didn't we just do it? Yeah, it, the video wasn't titled Detox, but I think I did something where I was doing like a, a two-year health update recently, or I, I went really in-depth on what the detox is, how long it takes, so maybe I can do a, a simplified, shorter version of that, uh, focusing slightly more on the detox part. Jeff, bro, what could be the cause of ear ringing and is there a fix? 
Uh, yeah, I think the radiation, because I, I've noticed that sometimes for me. Um, so if you're not sleeping, particularly in a, in a low EMF environment, um, you definitely want to do that first. Wi-Fi shielding.com guys. True health and living. Thoughts on short-term veganism for heavy metal chemical detox from mandatory you know what? No. The vegan diet is not good for any sort of detox because usually it's high in flavonoids, like really colorful fruits and vegetables. So, uh, I mean, if you just ate bread or potatoes all day, you might be detoxing, but that's not what a typical vegan diet is. Winning. What foods can I eat to make my feet grow bigger? <laughs> I thought this question was a little silly. I don't know if the dude is into feet or if he has like embarrassingly small feet. Either way, dude, no one's looking down at your toes besides your boyfriend or girlfriend. So someone left a comment like, oh, you can take growth hormone. Like, yeah, then your heart's going to grow too and all your other organs are going to grow. It's like if you're like young, you're still a teenager, you still have growth potential. But if you're an adult, you know, certain body parts are not going to grow anymore. Graham. Thoughts on Shilajit? I should probably do a video on this specifically, but you know we have the mineral supplements on organ supplements for a reason. If Shilajit was legit at all, I would be doing it. I've heard a lot of negatives about uh, the metals and the toxic things that can be in it. You know, it's not just minerals; it's a whole bunch of other stuff as well. It's basically like eating black tar. I think it's very, very bad. And just because there's minerals in it doesn't mean they have a high bioavailability. If it was some sort of miracle thing, a, a lot more people would be taking it and feeling a lot better on it. I'm not a fan of it, but maybe we'll do a full in-depth video on that. Shabir, I live in the Netherlands and only eat halal meat, but there's no organic halal meat here. What part of the animal is the best? Would lean part of veal be good? Yeah, I mean, the beef and the veal is usually a pretty safe bet. Sticking to the leaner side should be perfectly fine. I would definitely avoid the pork and the chicken while well, you Muslim halal doesn't eat pork, but I would definitely avoid the chicken and, um, and stick to the beef or veal. Roxanne, blood work and hormone replacement for women to elevate weight gain. So it's an overall lifestyle and dietary change that will improve your body composition. So you don't want to do specific things. You just want to make sure that you're at baseline with everything and then it's going to correct itself. You know, if people are following, you know, the diet I've been doing, if they reduce the Wi-Fi EMF, if they exercise a little bit, they're going to look a lot better, feel a lot better, and get healthier. There are blood markers, and you can look at your hormones, but those are things that will correct over time. Yeah, maybe you might have to donate blood to reduce ferritin. Maybe you might have to supplement certain things. Maybe taking, like, beef ovary glandulars uh, is going to help you temporarily for a little while. But eventually, after a year or two, you should be feeling a lot better and getting to some normal function where you don't have to be as hands-on. Jay Slick Twisted, I want you to touch on if kidney beans are a good diet for your kidneys. I'm assuming the reason they call them kidney beans is because they look like uh, kidneys. But you want white beans like cannellini beans, navy beans, because whenever there's a color in the bean, that, that is an indicator there's a compound in there that the body has to process. So... The butter beans, navy beans, cannellini beans, white beans are your safe bet if you want to include beans as a fiber source in your diet. We've been doing like a white bean puree on my pasta recently. I've, I've had that in my diet for a little while just for the added fiber. But that's it for the Q&A, guys. As I said earlier, just leave a comment down below if you have a question and I'll answer it. But uh, you guys can go to frank if you want to check out and support me through my businesses. Frankie's syringe meat, Frankie's syringe foods, organ supplements, Wi-Fi shielding, Frankie's naturals. We got all unique products, guys, and we're coming out with new stuff on a weekly basis. I'm kind of branching out to more brands and things that I don't necessarily have the capability to make myself of products I enjoy. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, but as always, if you guys could drop a like on the video, leave that comment down below. Subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. I'll see you guys soon.